Hi everyone and welcome back to Big Oggy's World. So, up until a few years ago I didn't really like soup and I think the reason, looking back on it, was that the soups that I was eating were basically pre-made out of the tin or out of the packet and they're not very good most of the time. I mean some of them are alright but they're not as good as when you get into your own soup making, I find. So, Previously on this channel, we have made a proper Italian minestrone soup from Carluccio's cookbook. So that has been a stonking recipe and we've gone back to it several times over. Well, I collect recipes from all over the place and I found a recipe from an old Sainsbury's magazine actually, which is a minestrone, but it's slightly different, as in obviously it's not particularly Italian, but... It's a minestrone with bacon. The original minestrone also had bacon, although a lot less of it. Um, but instead of using pasta in this one, we are using pearl barley. Now I really like pearl barley. It's something that I've had in lots of bar soups and I, I like the way that it swells, I like the way that it tastes. And the other really good thing about pearl barley is, yes, it's cheap and I know pasta's cheap, but so is pearl barley and it's got a fantastic amount of fiber in it, so it's really good for you as well. So this recipe is a bit like leftovers, but not quite leftovers. It's an empty your fridge out job. So to start off with, I'm gonna start it in this pan, although I know that it's not gonna fit in this pan, but this is an induction hob, and my big pan doesn't go on an induction hob. So I'm starting it here, and then I'll transfer it later. So to start off with, literally, I think with a minestrone you have to have everything ready. John will put all the rest, all the ingredients rather down below as he always does, um, but don't be too pedantic about amounts. Um, obviously it's, it says things like a large courgette, a large this, a large that. Well how large is large? It doesn't really compute. So. Do what you think if you want more of something put that in if you want less of that or you don't have that don't put that in either so to start off with i've just melted some butter and into that i am going to add my onion and celery now it does say to cut your celery finely i don't like celery i don't mind it in a recipe i i understand that it brings something to the taste but i don't want to eat it so i leave my celery chunky so it can be spotted and I don't eat it by accident. I've also got a bit of leek in here because I had a random leek floating around in the fridge. So that's going in to the butter to be softened. Okay, so those are nicely sweating down now. And so I'm going to add in my bacon lardons and these are smoked because we would like a little bit of taste. So in they go. Obviously, if you're veggie, or you just prefer it to be veggie, leave out the bacon. Now, once your bacon's a bit coloured, we're then going to add in a large carrot. And then a large potato, which has been diced. Now the actual recipe um, said to put in 250 grams of shredded white cabbage. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a white cabbage, so we got hold of a sweet or, or hispy cabbage um, but because it's not as dense as a white cabbage I'm not going to add it right at this minute which is when the recipe says to add so I'm going to leave it for a little bit because it's not as tough and what I'm going to do now is just leave this to sort of cook away to itself for about five or ten minutes just until the vegetables start to soften down a little bit and then we'll add the rest of our stuff and get it going properly. I'll be back. Okay, so that's had about 
10 minutes or so and things are just starting to sort of go a bit soft on the edges you can see the color changes so now I'm going to transfer it into my big pan because there's quite a lot of liquid to go in and it isn't going to fit in there so to start off with I'm just going to pour all this in so into our base we are now going to add a large courgette two large tomatoes I guess if you wanted to you could um, de-seed them I didn't bother your cabbage give that a mix a minute I do love minestrone when it's in the pan it's just so vibrant all the different colours it's kind of like a summer soup I think Then into that I'm going to add my pearl barley, there's about 100 grams of that there. My herbs which I'm using parsley and thyme, if you've got basil brilliant, I didn't happen to have any but um, any of those nice herbs go brilliantly. That's stirring. And then finally your liquid. So you need one and three quarters of a litre of chicken stock. So that's 1.75. Obviously, like I said, if you don't want to do meat, use vegetable stock. It's absolutely fine. Then you're going to need to season a little bit of salt and some pepper. Give that a stir around, and then we're going to bring it up to a sort of bubble, not a boil per se, but a rolling simmer if you like and then we're going to leave it to cook for probably about an hour and then we're going to check that the pearl barley is done and as long as it is and the vegetables are soft we're going to turn it off cover it and leave it to sit to infuse if you like and then later when you're ready you just reheat it and you serve it with some parmesan cheese on top if that's what you like this is a big recipe. You may need to add more stock depending on your vegetables. Um, that's absolutely fine. You're not gonna cause any harm by adding additional water to that. And if it is too much for your family, it freezes absolutely brilliantly. So you can just portion it up into freezer bags, freeze it down, and then you've got it handy whenever you need it. It doesn't freeze quite so well if you use pasta so again another good point for the pearl barley so i'm going to put this on and i will be back later and show you what it looks like in a bowl so that is our minestrone soup ready and done observations from the original uh, minestrone that we've done that john will put the link in for you this one is redder it seems to have more tomato whereas the other one we kind of called a white minestrone the other thing this one doesn't have that the other one does is beans. Didn't think about that until a while ago. Anyway, tastes delicious. As I said, perfect for freezing. This recipe will make enough for six portions, probably more for the freezer, depending on obviously how much you eat. Um, but it will freeze better than traditional minestrone because pasta does freeze a bit strange. That's what I'll say. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Let me know if you do try the recipe and you do like it. And we will see you all again really soon. Uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And remember to hit the notification bell. See you all again soon, guys. Bye for now.